the guru of squad double zero the assassin like no one yes i'm the best at what i do and one of the most notorious of the youtube anime and model community it's here to bring you uh, a video based on a question i actually had earlier this week on one of my videos um it was a phenomenal question. it's a really good question i'm i thank you and hey look you ever want to ask me any questions about a video or whatever i will hopefully get back you know i i if it's legit I will most likely do it, okay? It may take some time, don't promise when, but since, you know, I was doing similar videos a day, why not? And the question, as you can read, is, what makes a good protagonist? Now, the person wanted some advice uh, from me. Uh, I guess he was, yeah, the he, she, whoever the person might be, the subscriber, right? And, you know, getting some advice. And I often talk about, you know, this character being a good protagonist, that character not being a not so good protagonist, or just being trash, and, you know, whatever. So what makes a good protagonist? After a bit of deliberation, I guess you could say five, I've come up with five criteria as to what a good protagonist would be. Now, when a protagonist, it gets a little bit dicier. Unlike with my female characters video, which I just did, uh, should be uploaded right before this one. That one, all of them had to be met for a good female character. This one gets a little dicey, okay? Because different protagonists are required different. All right, number one, first and first and foremost, the impact. That this is this is different from from the female character uh, fourth point I made. The impact of the character upon the story. Now. When I said that, I clearly made a positive, you know, uh, in, in the case of the female character, clearly positive, you know, memorable, essential impact on the story. When I say the impact on the story of, of the protagonist, the impact, he, he must be integral into the entire story. What I mean is, the story should not exist without, he is the story. Now, while there are secondary characters, at the end of the day, he is the story. When you come, you know, there can be, say, Deuteragonist, secondary, minor character, whatever. He never should be a, uh, overshadowed. He is the impact. He is the story. That's what I mean. He's not just that, he, you know, he's essential to the story. He is the story itself. In the case of, and, and there's differences, okay? I'll use, I'll use a, a two, two four and two against. Two four. Avatar. In Avatar The Last Airbender, you have Aang, Avatar Aang, okay? In the case of One Piece, Monkey D, Straw Hat Monkey D. Luffy, both of them are four. In the case of Uzumaki Naruto from the series of Ma uh, Naruto, in the case of Natsu Drag Neo in Fairy Tale, both of them are against. They do not, they are not, they are not the, the integral part of the story. You'll understand what I mean in a minute. When you come to with Aang, it's his story. It begins with we find out the flashback of, of him being an avatar. The fact that the series is named Avatar, he's the avatar. The whole journey is with him mastering uh, the different bendings to, to the degree. And him clashing with Fire Lord Ozon because he represents the Fire Nation and the, the corruption of the world. That's the basic plot of the entire story. Period. Amongst the way we, we, we along the way, we meet, you know, Katara, uh, Zooks, um, Soka, uh, Ventoff, you know, Zuko, Zuko, who's the deuteragonist, and his reaction with, with Aang, you understand? Then Toph's act. Everything revolves around Aang in a positive manner, but each character builds on their own independently, but at the end of the day, it all comes back to Aang. You wouldn't have a story without Aang. Same thing with Monkey D. Luffy. It is his journey to become Pirate King. That's the goal, that's the entire goal, that is the plot of the story. Now, we, along the way, we build, we find other things and his impact on the world and whatnot. You know, you have the entire Straw Hat crew, which I consider the Deuteragonist, the first time I've ever seen that in history, where you have the entire crew an entire group of people to be the deuteragonist, but that is what the case is. Okay? It become a, the, the whole family aspect, but it still revolves around Luffy. Everybody's impacted Luffy. Even though they have interpersonal relationships, everything goes back to Luffy. Straw Hat, 
you know what I'm saying? Um, he he's always finding fate always has him in positions. He his connections with the world. I mean, come on, his father, his grandfather. All right, I'm his father, his grandfather, his um the alliances, his mentors. You know what I'm saying? Whoever you go to, this dude just got mad connections. The story would not be what it is without the character Luffy, period. When it comes to the case of Naruto, yes, you know, the series is named after Naruto. I understand that, you know, he's the protagonist. I understand that he's the uh, QB Jinchuriki, Nine Tails Jinchuriki. I understand all these aspects. I understand he brings the world together. But in all honesty, you could have had, the, he could have been the secondary character. At best, Uzumaki Naruto could have been a secondary character. Uchiha Sasuke, okay? And I'll bring in a third character, I'll bring in Gon Freaks. Gon Freaks fits this as well, because Killua Zodic and Hunter x Hunter could have easily been the protagonist, as well as Kurapika Kurta uh, from, from Hunter x Hunter as well, okay? Both of them could have been the protagonist before Gon Freaks. But anyways, I won't get into it. I won't get into that. With the example of, of Naruto, you could have had Uchiha Sasuke. You could have chosen Gaara. You could have chosen Rock Lee. You could have chosen Neji. All of them could have been the protagonist instead of Naruto. Specifically Sasuke. Or it could have been Uchiha Maru. He could have been the protagonist of the entire story. The Naruto, yes, he would have been important to the story, you can say, because of the way Kishimoto wrote it. He could have battled Sasuke. We could have gotten this from Sasuke's perspective. Sasuke, I'm, I'm willing to say, undoubtedly would have been a better protagonist. Specifically, the way the story went, uh, you know, people call it part two, but the and throughout the entire story, once once Sasuke left the village, you understand what I'm saying? Sasuke was far better developed, far better characterized than Naruto himself. Okay, that's my point. When it comes to Natsu Dragon Eagle. Now, again, the story does deal with him. First of all, who's truly the protagonist, him or Lucy Alphilia? I guess you, at this point, you gotta say not to drag in with the whole thing with Igneal, but you got other characters like Grey, you have other characters like Erza, you have other characters who could have easily have been the protagonist instead of not to drag in. He could have been an important character, but again, like Naruto, if he wasn't the character, you could have had Zeref. The greatness that is Zeref. You could have had Zeref. As the protagonist, instead of not to drag you. You know what I'm saying? A protagonist can be a villain. A protagonist can take that L, can take that loss. You understand what I'm saying? Now, moving on. Not only the the, the integral part of the story, the story itself. When it comes to it, you clearly have to have characterization and character development. If you don't have characters, first of all, that that should be a requirement for all characters. But specifically for protagonists, if you don't have proper characterization and character development, the story the story hurts significantly. This is why I name certain characters okay good protagonists. For examples, there are others, and other characters bad protagonists because their lack of characterization and character development significantly hurt the story. You can't say that it doesn't. It makes the story sometimes hit and miss. It makes the story sometimes not go the mature, for example, the mature aspect in which it could. Potentially. There's a bunch of potential there, but because you have to focus on the protagonist to a large degree, the story doesn't get to where it needs to be fully. You feel what I'm saying? If you got the protagonist still at this base, pretty base level and his understanding or her understanding, then it just doesn't work, okay? Or at least give them some, uh, uh, another thing. Okay, let me move on. Moral and psychological complexity. I won't say ethical, because ethics surround you, okay? That's the public, that's that's a cultural and societal thing. But moral and, and psychological complexity. Now, I know some people want to ignore certain characters because they think they're stupid, but it's not the case, okay? You whether it be from Batman to Goku, Luffy to Toriko, okay, um, to be uh, what, what's what's some more Beowulf, 
Bad Wolf to some degree. We didn't really get too much more, but he did have some. Uh, Superman to some degree. Some have it better or worse, but there at least is some, you know, the morality. Where do they stand? Okay? They shouldn't be bland. Okay? There should be, they should be put in situations, you know, questionable dilemmas. Okay? I mean, Again, more in psychology, I don't want to go too deep because both of them you can go pretty deep into. But they, they, their mindset has to be brought in a question. What they, what are they really about? And it also depends a bit on the story link. But at the same time, you can, in a short amount of time, bring more complexity. Because, let me give two examples. The Count, I mean, uh, Cask of Amontillado, which is a famous short story. It's only like four or five pages. This, this dude... His whole thing about revenge and and the, along that lines of, of the honor and the name kind of thing is it's fast, uh, you know it's very intriguing. Uh, another example um, wasn't the Black Pearl. I'm trying to remember. Um, shoot, I, it's another story I read when I was uh, in English class during high school. It's where about ten pages long, and there is a villager, and he finds this pearl, and he's trying to provide a better life for his family. But the greed that other people face, as long as he face, as well as he faces, does he hold it on? Does he lose his child? And, and did you know the effects it has on his family? You understand what I'm saying? Um, that kind of stuff. So that's the three. We have integral part of the story on this impact side. You have characterization and character development. You have don't know more psychological complexity. Alongside that, will obviously be philosophical complexity. I shouldn't have to say that, but, you know, I'll throw that in there as well. Fourth point. <clears throat> how, how, how do I make this? Impact upon history. What I mean by this is, this is specifically more, this is why I say not every protagonist will fit in the, uh, all these categories. But you'll, you'll get my Impact on history, okay. This is why I, I mean, this is something the protagonist should appear. Will what their actions do impact the history of the community, of the world, of the whatever? Okay, impact upon history, historical impact. Even in short stories, you can say that they do. Now, while we may not find out what that total impact is, there will be an impact. For example, if a protagonist is known and just murders, okay, which I mentioned on Casca of Amontillado, right, that's going to be huge because that person, if I'm not mistaken, was from a, was from a family, uh, one of the families. Oh, let's go Romeo and Juliet. Romeo going against the grain, going against and marrying Juliet, young as he was, naive as he was, doesn't matter, going against... And not only marrying her, but ended up killing one of the, uh, dang, I can't forget, I forget her family's name. It's been a couple years since I read that, to say the least, okay? Um, or at least I've heard the story. But anyways, he ends up killing because he was in the wrong place at the wrong time kind of thing. And, I mean, there were two powerful families, just even in that situation. Um... Whatever you paint it, doesn't matter the genre, they hit, they hit uh, Bilbo Baggins. He was the reason the whole Lord of the Rings thing really got kicking. If it wasn't for Bilbo Baggins, you wouldn't have no Frodo Baggins. You wouldn't have the, really the war, really the war for the ring? I'm trying to remember, because I mean, Sauron was kind of going, but anyways, I, yeah, I don't know if you would have had the War for the Ring without Bilbo Baggins. It was a far greater impact uh, on the story, as we clearly saw. Okay. So, right now we have an uh, integral part of the story. I mean, you are the story. You had, uh, trying to remember, I know you had development. Before that, you had, uh, you know, you had characterization, character development, uh, moral psychological and philosophical complexity you have historical significance and fifth what can I say lastly and definitely not least what can I say 
does he fit in the world or universe? Does he fit in the story? Does he or she fit in the story? Meaning, while, again, this is an issue that Naruto faces right now, Golden Freaks faces right now, questionably that, uh, at least early on in the series, that your mission you skate face, okay? Not to drag you. To where their character type, it, it, the, because of the atmosphere and, and, and the tone of the story, the mood that was set within the story, you question whether they belong in the world at which they live, in which they live. Now you can, some people may argue, well, you know, they're trying to change things. The, the, this shows uh, diversity. This shows this and that. Not exactly. Now, for example, I bring up Kill I Kill. Okay? Mako and Shoko Mako. As crazy as she was, as nutty, she brought the wisdom. She was the voice of reason for Mato Yuriko. Mako and Shoko Mako is a product of that crazy world in which they live. As well as is Nui Harimue ha Nui. Okay? Well, they all are. But specifically those two, as crazy as they were, they're products of the world in which they live. Yes, they belong. They're not protagonists, but they're characters. Just, just for example. So, if secondary and minor and side characters can potentially be products and belong to the world in which they live, the protagonist, de the protagonist damn sure should be in that similar situation. Robinson Crusoe definitely fits uh, uh, Jim Hawkins. I'm trying to think. Jim Hawkins, right? Treasure Island. If I'm going to see Jim Hawkins. Uh, Gulliver's Travels. Gulliver. Okay? You name it. All the classics. Uh, Frankenstein's Monster. In Frankenstein. Is it him or Victor Frankenstein that's the actual protagonist? That one's questionable. Aladdin or Alibaba, whichever is the actual protagonist in uh, this uh, Magi the Labyrinth of Magic. Throw the, you know, whatever whatever story you want to throw out. They better damn well fit in the series. If they don't fit in the series, then that's just like the whole integral part of the story. Just because the focus of the story is so much. I could go to the Foundation series, which is my all-time favorite series. Okay? It's... it's Doctor Red, I think it's only six books. And most it was it was originally four and then a couple were added along the way. Okay. The the protagonist definitely fits. And and all these elements which I presented, that's what he fulfills the, the role. You know, he fulfills the criteria, I should say. So again, not to make this video too long, but again, let's review. If if the character is not the integral part, if it, the character is not the story itself. Then that's a fail. If the character does not have characterization, proper characterization and character development, that's fail number two. If the character doesn't have moral, psychological, and philosophical complexity, that's a serious fail. If the character doesn't have um, historical impact on the story, that's a fail. And if the character does not even belong in the world, I don't know what the hell the author was thinking. I don't know what Monica, I don't know what the poet, whoever it may be, was thinking. You have to have a character to fit. Okay? I mean, in all honesty, though, the, the, I mean, they're all important. But if I rank it, characterization, character development, clearly, I mean, they're all important. But one, three, and five are necessities. Number two is hugely right up there. Number four, it, it just follows along the lines. But if these five criteria are not, if these five criteria are met, you have at least a good protagonist, if not a great or legendary protagonist. If the, if a number of these five or none of these five are met, then you have a complete, tra yo, if none of these, you have a complete trash protagonist, if, or it shouldn't even be called, called a protagonist, it's just horrible, it's a whole character, okay? If, if most of these five are not met, a good protagonist should have at least four. Let's be real, should have at least four. This historical impact is a little bit dicey depending on the, uh, the size of the story and the kind of world in which he lives. But the rest of the, the rest have gotta be there dog. Three or five clearly gotta be there. All five should be there. Four, definitely, three, three is like, you, you, you get, you, you, you get my drift. 
Thanks for one like, comment, subscribe. Tell me your thoughts on the subject at hand. Um, what are some of your favorite protagonists and why? Give me legit reasons as to far as how they pro apply to the criteria that I've uh, set forth for you. Uh, hopefully simplified enough as possible. Till next time, y'all. Have a beautiful day, beautiful night. Peace. Read great protagonists. Pay attention to the protagonists. They impact the story massively.